Take a look at the borders of the two states of Pennsylvania and Ohio, which are located in the east of the United States. As you can see, in part of this border, there is a strange strip of land that has created an obstacle for the two states of Pennsylvania and Ohio. This region is a panhandle located in the north and west Virginia that extends like a finger and penetrates into the neighboring states of Pennsylvania and Ohio. So what happened in the history of this unique region that created such a strange border for these two states? Welcome to another video from Geography Tour channel. The northern panel of West Virginia is basically a triangular territory that is only 64 miles long from north to south and is located between the two states of Ohio and Pennsylvania that in some areas the width of the panhandle even reaches 4 miles which makes the area of this part to be 585 square miles in total the northern panhandle also contains the four counties of Marshall, Ohio, Brooke and Hancock from south to north containing only 130,000 inhabitants therefore the beginning of the reason for the existence of this panhandle which is a big barrier between Pennsylvania and Ohio and goes back to 1779 which I will tell you about this strange story. The Northern Panhandle region had a longer history of human habitation before this year, dating back as far as 7000 BC, evidence of which includes the Creek Mound at Moundsville, considered the most important prehistoric feature in the area. The mound was built during the Adena period, and members of the Adena culture moved more than 60,000 tons of earth to create it around 252. 150 BC. Also, in the 1670s, during the Beaver Wars, the powerful Iroquois, aligned with the Five Nations Alliance in modern-day New York and Pennsylvania, were able to push the American Indian tribes out of the region and advance to the Upper Valley where the Ohio Territory was located, that they might save Ohio as a hunting ground. Much later, Virginia and Pennsylvania disputed the confluence of the Monongahela and Allegheny rivers, both claiming this valuable land. But later, Congress finally granted it to Pennsylvania and created the city of Pittsburgh. Virginia received compensation in the form of land to the west, which is the area today, the northern panhandle in West Virginia. But in general, the origins of the boundaries of the northern panhandle can be traced to the Mason-Dixon line which was traced by Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon in the midst of colonial disputes regarding the boundaries of Maryland, Pennsylvania and Delaware, which caused significant changes in the region. In 1779, Pennsylvania and Virginia agreed to extend the Mason-Dixon line 5 degrees west and then continue directly north to the Ohio River. Also, 1784 marked the turning point when Virginia ceded its claim to the lands north and west of the Ohio River in accordance with the Treaty of Paris, which ended the American Revolutionary War and gave the United States sovereignty over the Northwest Territories. This actually made the Ohio River the new border of Virginia. However, Virginia retained control of a significant portion of the 585 square miles of land between Pennsylvania and the Ohio River. Fast forward now to the Civil War era when the issue of secession from Virginia arose because while Virginia initially seceded from the Union and joined the Confederacy, not all of its residents supported the decision. This issue caused the people of Northwest Virginia to have distinct cultural and economic relations, which caused many to oppose secession. The Western territories, home to those less supportive of slavery, felt marginalized within the government, and in response to their grievances, Western and Northern territories came together at the Wheeling Convention in 1861. Here, they annulled Virginia's secession from the Union and established a separate government led by Francis Pierpont, who, as the conflict intensified, the reconstructed government of Virginia sought recognition from the United States government. So, in December 1862, the United States Congress passed the West Virginia Statehood Bill, paving the way for the creation of a new state in Virginia. The bill recorded the consent of voters in the proposed new state, and in 1863, voters in the Loyalist territories overwhelmingly supported the creation of a new state, and on June 20, 1863, West Virginia was officially admitted as the 35th state in the Union. It is registered. This newly formed state included parts of northwestern Virginia, and the northern panhandle now became an integral part of West Virginia that this important moment marked a turning point in American history. 
providing a political solution for Virginians who felt disenfranchised, allowing them to create a government aligned with their interests and values. So today, the northern Panhandle extends approximately 64 miles to its northernmost point in Chester, where it protrudes as a triangular finger into the states of Pennsylvania and Ohio, bordered by the Ohio River. While the early settlers relied on agriculture for their livelihood, the future of the region was shaped by its abundant resources, including coal, iron ore, oil, natural gas, timber, clay, and glass sand. As the northern Panhandle became an urban industrial center and pioneered the production of these natural resources in the United States. Also, according to the 2020 census, the population of this area is slightly less than 130,000 people, which represents a decrease of 5.8% compared to 2010, which constituted about 7% of the total population of West Virginia. Thank you very much for being with me until the end of the video and see you in another video.